Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in, being here with us today for this first session of In Total 3 for the collective series discussing the intersection between revenue and marketing, the Rev Marketing Automation, also abbreviated as RMA. We are hosting this session and the two coming sessions uh, of the series of three together with our member user guest. So I'm super excited about this and I'm also excited to have all of you joining. Make sure to say hi in the comment section. Let us know from where you're tuning in. It's always super exciting to see from wherever in the world we have people joining and being interested in the topics we put on the agenda. So looking forward to see your comments there and also your questions and remarks because we will include them in the session. So as I said, in this session, we will first of all explore the concept of RMA, Revenue Marketing Automation. We will discuss how to bridge the gap between revenue and marketing teams. And my name is Leah Jordan. I'm the co-founder of Tech Talk Travel, and I'm joined by three wonderful experts, which I'd love to introduce to you guys now. So as they come into the picture, I start off with Eric Munoz. Hi, Eric, tuning in from the UK. Fantastic yeah. to see you. Likewise, nice to see you too. Great. And for everyone in the audience, Eric is not a stranger to the hotel tech space and community. Many of you will know him from his former roles with SiteMinder, Vertical Booking, Price Match, and most recently, Lubra. And currently, he is the Chief Revenue Officer at UserGuest and driving the concept and idea of RMA. So fantastic to have you. And also, everyone in the audience, make sure to join him and follow him on LinkedIn and Twitter, as he is very vocal about trends and he's debating many interesting topics there. So I can only recommend to make sure to add this to your feed in, on both channels. That would be great. Thank you. Right. Then all the way from Frankfurt in Germany, we have joining an expert of e-commerce, who is Amanda Du. She is the head of e-commerce at Penta Hotels. Amanda, Hi. Hi. Have you? Hi. Good to see you. We love the print in the back and of your uh, of your background, we already said earlier. Eric said he, if he could choose for a virtual background, this would probably be the one. So yeah, I can only agree. Very lovely, Amanda. You're responsible for Brand.com Revenue and CRM, and you are a big believer in connecting the revenue and marketing teams closer to collaboratively achieve business goals better. So I'd say you're the perfect candidate to join our debate here today about RMA. And um, for everyone who's not that familiar with Penta Hotels, Penta Hotels is a group with currently 28 properties in about eight countries worldwide. So good group to represent and share some insights about this concept. Then last but not least, we have also someone who's not a stranger to the collective series. He has been with us a few times before. So thank you for joining us once again. It's Daniel Fry. Hi, Daniel. Hello, everyone. Hey, good to see you. Thank you for joining once again here for this session. And Daniel is the Vice President of Revenue Management at the H Hotels Group, which is a, one of the biggest hotel operators in Germany. And very special about this group, it's a family-owned uh, company still. And it's a steadily growing company. So every time I check the numbers, they're higher. So last time it was less. Now it's 60 hotels in 50 different countries. So I'm sure if you join us for the next collective session, it will be even more. So watch out for this sure. company. Great to have you. And also, Daniel is a member of the expert circle at our partner, HSMA Germany. So also um, representing a few more opinions from the revenue community, which will just add more value to our session today. And as I said, we will discuss now the intersection and the potential of revenue and marketing, how to close the gap. But to set the scene, I think it would be very helpful, Eric, if I give the floor to you to quickly explain to us first What's, what exactly does RMA mean to you and user guest? And why did you come up with this concept in the first place? Thanks, Leah. Yeah, so Rev Marketing Automation, I think the key word in that acronym is the uh, automation piece. As hoteliers and hoteliers with experience with different technologies, that's probably the first question you have for yourself. Rev Marketing, we understand revenue management and marketing, but What's this automation piece? So to put it into specific categories, we're talking about different digital assets, different technology systems. So, but, but systems we all have, um, the, the hotel website is the, the primary digital asset, which is typically managed under e-commerce or marketing. So we have the website, the hotel booking engine, and the, the objective in RMA is to increase the amount of direct business so that we don't just drive traffic to our website and those visitors 
read our descriptions and view our pictures and videos and then disappear. I mean, and this is important that they understand what um, the hotel has to offer, but RMA is designed to actually bring those visitors into the booking funnel via the booking engine. And the, and the third piece in terms of automation is the hotel inventory. So that is either the, the PMS system or the RMS system, depending uh, what connectivity is available. So to put it in real simple terms, RMA is automating the ability for marketing to convert website traffic with an understanding of the hotel's revenue objectives. So do we need more business when we're already full? Do we need business because we just had a group cancellation? So if there's that, that intelligence that the revenue strategy can provide, uh, let's say the, the, the marketing assets, that's key so that the um, hotel receives bookings when they ideally would prefer to have those bookings and they're not turning away business or trying to, do, to uh, generate traffic for dates where they're, they're already heavily booked. So uh, it's an exciting area because you, you, we have revenue management teams and marketing teams today like at Penta and also H Hotels who communicate and collaborate and work very well together. So the technology that automates this is really just accelerating what should already be a best practice. Right. That's yeah. Thank you for filling us in here. I, I think that makes sense to me at least. And now it would be very interesting to hear your thoughts, Amanda, as you are obviously heading brand.com and probably one of your objectives is also to increase direct sales. Um, first of all, can you resonate with what Eric just shared? And second is um, how do you approach this at Penta Hotels? How are the work, the teams working together, revenue and marketing and currently group? Thank you for the for the question. Yeah, for sure. Um, as you mentioned, KP, uh, my, one of my most important KPIs is to drive um, brand.com and direct revenue. And we actually uh, had a had a chat before the call with with Eric on on the solution. So I, I have I'm, I'm as I mentioned. So we we are, we are big believer in the revenue and marketing work together. So revenue team actually has a lot of data that marketing team wants to have and vice versa. For example, the accurate demand forecast, uh, pricing, comp set, booking pace, and, and mainly the transaction level data. And from the marketing side, we understand the, um, the guest better. We have in-depth understanding of the guest dem demographics and the trending topics, topics that is relevant to the successful campaign. So I think uh, what the RMA do, does is definitely bridge uh, bridge those two um, two departments when the data flows and information flows, um, and 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 at Penta I think from the team structure wise we have um, me head of e-commerce and we have uh, head of revenue and we both report to our com commercial leader. So that uh, sets a very good foundation for us uh, to work together closely and also importantly on the eye level. Um, and when it comes to technology, I think we, we now um, not 100% fully automated yet, but we are somewhere in between, between zero to 100. I think we are sitting 60 to 70 uh, percent where we do implement it, a, a, a tool on, on our booking engine to make sure that we understand who is coming to our brand.com and whether they have a high intention or low intention when it comes to converting to a booking. And when they see a lower price on the booking and um, booking engine, like uh, on the booking, sorry, on OTAs than the booking engine, then we make sure on the booking engine, we match up to this uh, lower price. Um, and I think, you know, if, if your revenue team and marketing team are not talking to each other yet, then you have a big problem. And now it's just a way of, okay, how we could work smarter and more efficient um, together. Right. Thank you, Amanda. It makes sense. And I mean, that's, that's an idea you hear a lot in the industry right now, right? Many companies are restructuring to commercial teams instead of having two separate marketing and revenue divisions. Daniel, how is that set up at H Hotels? Um, are you approaching it the same way? And what's your take on the automation in that field? Um, well, we do have a slightly different approach here at H Hotels. We still have a, a revenue department, um, but within the revenue department, the e-commerce team sits. And then on the other hand, we do have a marketing department 
uh, in the sales department where we are talking about, let's say, the old, good old school marketing approach, uh, offline marketing, banner advertisement, and I don't know what else. So th this is how we, how we or, or newsletter campaigns. So this is how we, we are set, set up here within H Hotels. However, uh, Samantha correctly said, uh, there is uh, absolutely no way not to talk to each other uh, within those departments. Uh, as, um, well, I, I, I always believe that the revenue team is the one who is uh, giving them, uh, giving the, the direction because the revenue team should be the first ones who are flagging um, a different period or a need period or who are, uh, who are seeing uh, which uh, property is struggling and um, based on this on this indication be, based on this knowledge uh, they are the ones pushing departments into the direction to get the thing thwarted and to, to, to push the to push the property back in line so and that's what we are trying to do we are having regular calls um, we just had one call before the session today started um, where we are discussing those need periods and need properties and where we are discussing together uh, the actions uh, which should be made. Now, to be very fair and to be very honest, uh, the revenue guys are not, uh, by nature, not the most creative ones. Uh, I just speak for myself. Um, and um, and uh, but 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 I do see when 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 a property is really struggling and uh, when action needs to be done in time. And this is why we need both departments and we need uh, to talk to each other just to um, to get things right. Um, with regards to the optimization, well, we are also not there 100%. I, I assume we will never get to 100% optimization, but we should be aiming to get there um, because we all have uh, the same issues, uh, uh, lost a lot of manpower and uh, we do not have the time and the resources to, to run manual processes uh, day in, day out. And that's why an optimization approach uh, between those two departments is absolutely necessary and helpful. Right. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, that's very interesting to me, um, I think, especially the aspect when you said about the collaboration between marketing and revenue, that revenue should be leading. That's interesting. Amanda, you as representative of the marketing department, right, or the marketing side of this whole story, being very close to the customer, as we are very customer focused and customer centered, what we do, would you agree? Like, is that how you would see the setup as well? Is revenue the one leading the game here? I would agree when it comes to the internal data. Um, like, mm -hmm. of course, revenue has the best insight when it comes to where we need the most, uh, uh, most, I would say, support to drive the demand for a certain area. So, and they are the data center for when it comes to internal uh, property data. But when it comes to customer data and also what is really trending in the area or what 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 would be a successful marketing campaign then i think that part marketing um, or e-commerce or together plays a, a bigger role so yeah i agree to an extent but i think overall to to have a successful campaign you need to combine the internal and external data uh, together to have a, a common approach right I so Eric, yeah, yeah. So, so um, Eric, if you if you look at this right um, from the RMR perspective that you are a kind of um, evangelist for now, right? You're trying mm -hmm. to kind of establish this concept in industry, which we find very interesting. Mm -hmm. How would you see the the roles of the revenue and the marketing managers? Are they actually emerging into one, like merging into one, or do we keep them separate? What can we picture there for the next it's, year? It's actually, it's actually fascinating to hear both Daniel and Amanda's uh, perspective on how the their respective businesses run and operate because they're very similar in terms of the communication between the departments. They're very similar in terms of the um, understanding and acknowledgement that revenue has uh, the key data. And from a marketing point of view, marketing have a better understanding of the, of the customer. And it's, it's, the reason it's fascinating is because I think from, to, to answer your, your question, Leah, you've got revenue capabilities which can be extended to the marketing team through RMA, and you have marketing capabilities that can be extended to the revenue team. So in fact, RMA isn't about merging of roles 
or replacing roles. Um, it's merely supporting existing resources, existing organizational structure to, to achieve an automated and let's say more optimized result. So no less manual processes. Of course, the communication still needs to be there, but um, automating, let's say, the most practical and logical um, decisions. And I'll give you one example. So imagine, because Penta and HOTLs have multiple properties, right? So imagine somebody that knows Daniel or knows Amanda, contacts them. Hey, I'm going to be traveling to such and such location, or I'm thinking of traveling. I think you have a hotel there. And maybe in this example, you have more than one hotel. Now, what you would normally, or what anybody, whether you're in revenue or e-commerce marketing, whatever, what the, the normal reaction would be, okay, um, do you have any dates in mind or are you flexible, right? Because if you tell me which dates, whether you're flexible or not, then I can give you the best recommendation. And then the next step is easy. Well, it's a weekend, could, could be next weekend, could be next month, so one weekend in the future. And then of course you can say, well, actually, if you book this particular property on these dates, I can't guarantee, but like maybe we can upgrade you, subject to availability, early check-in, late check-out, welcome basket of fruit, maybe some champagne, blah, 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 because we're friends, right? This kind of conversation that happens every single day at every hotel around the world with salespeople or revenue management people or, or marketing is just normal professional hotel sales communication, right? RMA is automating that on the website because when people visit the website, they have different booking intent. They have different degrees of flexibility, no flexibility or yes, I'm quite flexible. And so when the um, solutions in place, website, booking engine, and let's say hotel inventory are all aligned, then the next steps are quite easy. And it's a, it's a logical outcome and a predictable outcome based on the data that we see that you will increase more direct bookings because you're actually offering something that's more aligned with the, the customer, let's say the potential customer's booking intent. So then the, the, the rest is just a normal consequence of using the right kind of data, the right kind of offer, which the revenue management people already understand perfectly well. Revenue management being the right price for the right person at the right time, et cetera. But now applying the marketing insight, which is knowledge of the customer on the website. So when you put those two together, it's the most logical outcome and the most practical, um, let's say, expectation when, when you bring these two disciplines together. Right. Makes total sense to me. But then I'm always wondering, um, when you put the technology in to fill this gap and to facilitate this concept, right? Like, how easy is that? Is it actually that easy? So you just apply a solution and then you, you have the objective to combine both um, resources, right, from both sides yeah. and then just get better, a better performance. Is it that easy? Like, I mean, we all know. The, the, the nice thing about this type of technology is that um, we're using existing technology. We're not talking about replacing anything at all. So whichever website, CMS or system is in play, we apply JavaScript using Google Tag Manager or a similar tool. So that's one. That's copy paste, 10, 15 minutes. On the booking engine, of course, the booking engine has multiple pages. Uh, so JavaScript on, the, on those pages as well. And that's usually something that's managed by the booking engine provider. But again, we give them the, the script, copy paste, another 15 minutes whenever they have time to do that. So that setup is let's say 30 minutes. And then the only other piece which has a, a real variable time component is the hotel availability, which can come from just the standard reports that almost every PMS has the ability to send via, via email or it could be via the revenue system. That, that, that piece can be a five minute job or let's say a couple of hours depending. So in terms of how we would think about normally implementing technology, it's under one hour versus I have to schedule three days or maybe a few weeks in advance. It's something that, um, like I said, because existing technology stays in place and this is just, um, a communication layer 
That's pulling together the right pieces of data so that the guest has the right incentive, the right uh, motivation to, to actually book. Um, yeah, we're not talking about heavy, heavy in, um, technical in, in, uh, implementation. Right. Okay. Understood. And then, um, Daniel, what's your thoughts if you listen to that? I mean, automation always also comes with um, giving up control for some teams, right? I think that's one of the misunderstandings. Endings for, for many hoteliers when they look at automation that, oh, I don't have control over the rates anymore. I want to see it. I see, let's see what's happening. I want to take the decision. I want to verify this. Is that something that you would say is an objective to automating this process? Um, I completely agree with you that uh, whenever automation comes in place, uh, people are afraid of losing control and losing jobs. I mean, We did, we did have many changes here in the last years, and it was always the same uh, concern, which you just need to take away as a leader and to explain to people uh, what's the purpose and uh, what, what the objective of this task is. Because, well, I, I always used to call this monkey work. Uh, we don't need those. We don't, we don't need to use our, our best resources for, for, for things which, are, which can be done by system. Mm. It's so... 21st century, isn't it? Um, and um, but this this concern is there, and it's it's always been there, and we need to take it away. But this this has to be explained really, really properly to the guys. Uh, and and after a while, everyone gets used to it. And one thing I've seen in the last years is that no one would go back to the manual processes we've had in place like three, four years ago. No one. So, right, that's a good testament. I mean, that, that's that's great to hear, right? So yeah. your current teams would, every process they question to be automated, they would not go back to the former yeah. way no, of doing no, it. No way. Well, yeah. uh, no one. So um, I guess it would be the same with, with this project. This, mm -hmm. this In the beginning, high level of stress, big concerns. And then after a while, everybody forgets how it was and no one would go back to where it was. Right. Amanda, how, how do you feel about this? Like looking at also the change process coming with this concept. Yeah, and I, I think I would, I would like to add uh, one point and when Eric mentioned whether it's an easy technology to implement. I think from technology perspective, it is. And we always ask the lender, is it plug and play? Is it easy for us? If it's too complicated, we are always, you know, back off a bit. But I think the fundamental thing here is technology is an enabler for us to do all of those. The fundamental, we need to have the right mindset and, and culture in place. That I think marketing nowadays is, is no longer a cost center. It's, it's a revenue generated rating center. That's why we are working so closely together with the revenue, revenue department to, to make sure that we meet the ultimate business goals, right? And once the culture is there, we have the right foundation and also to, have, to establish a, a good process in place because the tool is there, the technology is there. It doesn't work itself so just give you an ex example of the, the a tool that we implemented we realized that we have to bring different stakeholders together uh, head of revenue head of reservation to to really do the induction to understand what the tool can do the capabilities uh, of the tool so to to really make sure that if they have good ideas then they, they could flag to us or uh, vice versa that we fully utilize uh, the technology we implement Yeah, mm -hmm. and when it comes to automation or manual power, and, and I think people people just need to reskill themselves a bit and to equip with the new uh, new skill set uh, to 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 utilize the tool better instead of being being replaced by the tool itself. Yeah. Right, Eric. Is there anything you'd like to add to that to this whole part of the change process around automation? Um, the only thing I'd like to add is really that um, I think one of, one of the highlights that I, 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 should, I should share is that the way that the software or the solution can be implemented um, is, has minimal friction. So to do a test or a trial is 30 minutes or just to, to set up right. <laughs> But I think one of the really nice benefits of having, let's say, a unified solution which is taking data from the website so vi website visit analytics which you have in google analytics but in a format that most hoteliers aren't engaging with or have let's say uh, working with 
seamlessly. It's, it's, it's got great data, but it's not in a, let's say, a user-friendly format. Then you have booking engine data. Now, every, every booking engine has an, uh, a reasonable set of reports, sometimes combining website analytics as well. But within an RMA, by, by nature, we have the, that data already aggregated. So it's as simple sometimes as seeing a dashboard with different flags identifying different countries where visitors are from. Some people are booking within the last seven days, others 35 days. Like to be able to visualize that data, which by the way, it's available in Google Analytics, it's available in your booking engine reports, but to see it unified and, and, and visualize in, in let's say a, a user-friendly dashboard, I think is a big part of making hoteliers, whether they're a revenue person or a marketing person, making them actually happy to engage because when we talk about RMA and analytics, a lot of hoteliers will think, ooh, this is going to be a really, like a, like a boring, the most boring spreadsheet or table with data that you could ever imagine. That's what, a lot, honestly, what a lot of hoteliers would, would feel. However, uh, we, we've taken great care on, on the dashboard, let's say the, 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 the back end, so that you don't have to actually explain what you're looking at. The data is graphed or represented in such an obvious way that sure, you can say, look, these are the flags of the guests, where they're coming from. And the hotel is like, yeah, we understand it. And sometimes they just, um, they just expect that. Other times they give you, you know, a really positive feedback in that um, it's nice that the system is not just effective, let's say on the front end, like the results are not only good, but the way it's uh, easy to sort of manage and set up on an ongoing basis is also important because I've worked with lots of different systems that can be effective in terms of what they aim to achieve, but the setup or the configuration area administration is an absolute nightmare, but that's, that's how it is. Uh, and, I, and I think that I, I want to point that out, that in this, in this example, when we're talking about RMA from, from user guest at least, um, the back-end experience is, is really quite positive. Right. And that, so we understood about the technology uh, aspect here. And uh, we have a, about like five to ten minutes left. So anyone in the audience who has another question to add, we, we're happy to answer. Let us know. Um, but I would like to, now we understood about the concept, right? So if we go back to the very basics. So we talked about the gap between revenue and marketing and the opportunities there. So if you look at potential hoteliers out there having traditional setups, Daniel and Amanda, what would be your recommendations to these hoteliers? Where to approach this, getting these teams working together more closely? Like where to start and what's the main arguments to drive this change? Maybe for also people in the audience wanting to kind of start, kickstart this in their own company. What would you say, Amanda, where to start? But, but well, what's the argument there? But very simple, start talking, start talking to each other. I think we, Daniel and I both emphasized on this. And, and in fact, I, do, I did all my property uh, visits together with uh, our head of revenue. And I, right. all of those, because cool. for me, it was very important to understand how the property is going, what we're doing, what, what are the segments of, um, uh, of the customers. And how the competitors we actually went through the city to look at the city and to, to visit all the competitor hotels so it's i might not contribute that much during the meetings but then i could take every information back and channel it back to to our marketing and e-commerce team and to say hey next time when we do marketing campaigns then we i have all those background information back in mind to understand okay what makes sense what doesn't and it's, and even for the online campaigns right what keywords might makes more sense to certain right. properties than other keywords. So, and, and you don't get all of those information by just sitting in your beautiful headquarters. Uh, so I would say, go out and visit hotels. And if, if you can visit together with your revenue team, that's, that's right. how I benefit most. Cool, sounds good. And Daniel, what would you say, where to start? Like, what's the best argument to get the teams working together? I think, well, definitely. Uh, communication for sure, but also setting up one strategy for all teams. There's, right. There should be there should be one one main strategy for all commercial teams where all commercial teams are working towards, and the understanding in between the different commercial teams need to be need to be uh, communicated uh, in meetings or calls or wherever 
So each revenue manager has to become a sales manager, e-commerce person, and a marketing manager to a certain degree, not completely. Uh, and vice versa too. So we are inviting our salespeople to, under, to explain them the st- revenue strategies so that they are not frustrated when we decline their business. Mm-hmm. This is just, just part of, of um, uh, interdepartmental communication. And um, I would definitely recommend this to everyone as a revenue person, just to become a small sales manager, small revenue manager, small e-commerce manager. Mm. to understand what the guys are doing. And then with one strategy in place, I think uh, we are on a good, good path to achieve our goals and to have fun to work. Which is also very important, just not to forget about that. <laughs> It's really? also fun. And I mean, that's what Eric said in, in the very beginning, right? We have smaller teams to do smaller work with a very a highly changing environment, right? It's very um, biodynamic. It's not really predictive anymore as we could do in the mm-hmm. past pre-COVID. So, I mean, it's kind of mandatory to optimize the processes there and also how we work together. Eric, from your end, um, I mean, if we start offline, getting the teams together, working better together, understanding about opportunities, then moving to technology, any argument aspect we forgot to mention to really um, vouch for revenue marketing automation? I, I think the uh, the... Yeah, there is there is something. In fact, it's it's normally if I was not in a uh, panel discussion, if I was in a one-on-one discussion with a hotelier, the way I would introduce the concept would be different, slightly different, in the sense that I would confirm that every hotel in the world has a revenue strategy. Right? It could be from an RMS. It could be from a really nice spreadsheet. Could be a really intelligent consultant. It doesn't matter. Where the strategy is coming from, it could be good, neutral, bad. It doesn't matter. But every hotel, let's say, has a strategy. This is summer. This is winter. This is Sunday. This is Wednesday, etc. right? But what I like to then say is that when somebody visits your hotel website, whatever strategy you have, however good it is, is invisible. The guest does not know anything unless they go into the booking engine. And then they start to see price, value, conditions, etc., cetera, and they get, a, they get a sense for what your strategy or your marketing objectives may be, right? And so the data that we have is um, showing, and I guess hotels' data would, would vary, but only one in five visitors to a hotel website typically then goes into the booking engine as well. So that 80% of traffic, which never gets into your booking engine to understand what your revenue strategy might be, That's what uh, user guests and RMA is looking to, to optimize. Yeah? So um, I, I wanted to explain things in that concept because uh, hoteliers will, will understand the bounce rate that they have today in terms of website traffic and who okay. actually goes to the next step. Um, it's usually a problem or it's usually a metric or a KPI, like Amanda was saying before, that every hotel will be looking to improve, like moving that needle more towards direct bookings. Because uh, it's usually, almost always, a much lower cost than, than other channels. Right. Thank you, Eric. Well, I'd say um, we're perfect in time. We're, we're live now for 35 minutes. I mean, take away my mute moment of two minutes, probably, <laughs> which uh, was a good opener. But thank you so much, Eric, Amanda, and Daniel, for joining us here. Uh, it was very insightful. And um, yeah, everyone in the audience as well, thank you for joining us and having tuned in. And if you'd like to continue the conversation now, and you can't wait for the next sessions coming up in September and November, um, just make sure to connect with Eric, Amanda, and Daniel here on LinkedIn. I'm pretty sure they're happy to connect and to follow up. Um, yeah, and also make sure to connect with HSMA, who has an expert circle, and they discuss these topics on a frequent basis as well. And if you'd like to revisit the session, we will publish the session shortly, uh, both as a video and a podcast. So make sure to watch out on the user guest and Tech Talk Travel channels. We will post them there. And yes, um, thank you very much. You three was, uh, was really nice and very insightful. I learned a lot. And I'd say it's bye for now. Thank you so much and see you very, very soon again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a good day.